Hi, this is Kevin from Let Me Tech You, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over how to set up an uh, AWS client VPN using OpenVPN. Now, you may have heard of a, a VPN service or may have not, but basically what this enables you to do is access resources over a public internet service, um, such as like, you know, your, your Spectrum or your AT&T to access your corporate network's private services, whether it be servers, applications in the cloud. So I'm gonna be going through this blog article and how to do this using AWS and the OpenVPN firewall. So to do that, we're gonna first go to AWS. If you don't already have an account, you can set one up on aws.amazon.com. And once you get there, you're just gonna go ahead and sign into the console. So I'm already signed in here. So once you get signed in, you want to make sure you're in the region you want to uh, basically deploy this in. So I'm going to be doing this in U.S. East Ohio. You can do it in Virginia, California, Oregon, or wherever you reside, close or wherever your users will reside is closest to. So for demo purposes, we're going to go ahead and set up a separate VPC as well. AWS does provide one for you by default in each region, but we're going to do one here using their walkthrough tool here so I'm going to go ahead and I want to auto it's going to auto generate some names so I'm just going to call it VPN and as you can see it's going to append VPC to it I'm going to keep it with this 10.0.0.0 slash 16 solder block you could dumb it down but for this video purposes we don't really need to and we're actually going to do for availability zones, we'll do just one. So then we're going to basically keep our, uh, now for, for the availability zones, that does increase redundancy across you know your resources, but we're not gonna really need um, redundancy for this lab. But basically if you wanted to have resources or um, network interfaces in multiple, or subnets in multiple uh, zones, it decreases the risk of um, you being down if AWS goes down or any of their data centers. So we're just going to do one public, one private subnet. The public subnet's going to, what's going to hold our OpenVPN instance. So NAT gateway, we're not going to need one of those. So basically that's just a way to access the um, internet through a NAT gateway from your private um, subnet um, to your internet gateway. Um, so the NAT gateway would essentially sit inside your public um, subnet. And then the endpoints, you don't have to worry about that. That's just a way to access like certain things like S3 without having to go directly to um, the internet to do it. So we're going to create this VPC here. Now once that gets created, we'll be able to go ahead and see that. So we got our VPC created, created our subnets. So you see we got our public and private route tables, everything like that. So you don't have to worry about going and configuring anything else. So next we're going to want to go over to our EC2. And this is their Elastic Compute Cloud service. And we're going to want to launch an instance. So basically now we're just going to go ahead and search for the OpenVPN service. We can name this whatever we want. We're going to call it OpenVPN. Come down here and you can search for open VPN. Hit enter. Now it's going to take you here. Just go ahead and click on where it says marketplace here. Should already take you to it. And then we're going to do the one that says access server five connected devices. So this has a free tier um, and a free trial. So basically, you know, you can check out the pricing, but you know, we're not going to have it running long enough for us to get charged because we'll delete it right after this here if you're just doing this for demo purposes. So then we're going to hit continue and we just want to ver make basically verify that all these settings that are in here are what we want. So the instance type, we can keep it as a t2.small. You can change if you want. Key pair, if you don't already have one. Um, create it. You'll just basically want to create one of these. You'll need this to be able to access your uh, um, instance. And if you want, if you're using PuTTY, they made it kind of nice. You can uh, actually download the PPK 
without having to convert it. And let me see here. So and then I'm going to, oh, my mouse is kind of jumpy here. I'm going to select the VPN one. And now we'll get into our network settings. And we'll want to make sure this is inside the VPC that we just created. So that's in there. The subnet, we want to make sure it's in the public subnet. We don't want to assign it, uh, auto assign it a public IP. I'll show you that why in a second. And then it's going to create a security group. Now it's going to add um, some default rules here. Um, basically, we we'll want to keep these to be able to SSH into it, access the UI, things like that. And then the storage and everything will keep the same. We'll go ahead and launch this instance. This might take a second, so I'm going to pause this here and then wait for this instance to come up. Actually, well, so since it's already been, um, I've already had a subscription on that, it, it went pretty quick. So actually, the um, that part sometimes can take a minute or two if you, if, the, if this is your first time launching the OpenVPN service. So now we'll move over to the instances here, and I'll filter this by, oh, here, we already got the one running. So... Some of these other ones terminated from some other labs. So now we can go over to our elastic IPs. And what we want to do is associate a new one. So this is an older one I had. I'm actually going to delete that one. And I'm going to create a new one. So we're going to go to, go to allocate and we're just going to pull one from Amazon's pool. And then you want to go ahead and associate that with your instance. Choose our instance there. You can do network interface. That's if you have multiple interfaces and you want one to be in, like, say, different AZs or something, or one private, one public, stuff like that. We're going to do the private IP address, and we're going to allow this to be reassociated. Now, the reason you want it to be reassociated is so that if your instance was to go down, you can basically reassociate that with another instance. and You won't have to re, uh, make all your end users reapply or change their IP address they're connecting to. So we'll give that a second there. So once that gets applied, we'll basically be able to SSH into that and set up some additional configuration. So what we'll need to do is let me close out of that. Open up PuTTY, and if you're using um, PuTTY to do this, you'll need a tool called PA, PAGENT, and then in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll hit Add Key, and then you'll select that v PP key that you uh, downloaded. Mine's already in there, so then what I'm going to do is go to my host, well, actually, you could just take this um, outside IP address, since it's already attached to your instance, paste that in there. And you want to click yes on this. And then you'll want to sign in as open VPN AS. And it's just going to run through some initial configuration. So you'll want to hit yes on that. That's just accepting the terms. This is going to be our private access server. We want to listen on all interfaces. And then we want to keep these default rules there. We don't want to uh, route all our traffic through the VPN. So you may or may not, but for me now, I just don't want my have to send all the internet traffic through that. It's going to keep no on that. We're going to use the local um, database for authentication, so we'll create a user in there for uh, authenticating in. And then we will want the uh, private subnets to be uh, accessed, so this gives you the ability to create other instances in the private network that you don't want to be accessed from the outside. And then do you wish to log into? Yes, we do want to. We're going to leave that blank. Okay, now once we got all that set up, we'll basically need to log in 
and we'll need to change the path. Well, we're already logged in, so we'll need to uh, create a password for that default user. So we're going to need to do a sudo password open VPN. It's going to make you create a new password. If you don't do that, you won't be able to log into the UI. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this IP address here, which is already in the URL, so I'll just copy that. And we're going to go HTTPS colon four slash four slash. And then we want to go backslash admin. That's going to take us to the admin console. Now we're going to use that uh, username and password that we created. So open VPN and then the password. Go to the admin. Oop. Okay, so close out of that and then agree to these terms as well. Now, basically, the service is running. So you can check out your configuration. You'll see your network settings. You know, we have our host name here. We have it listening on all the ports. Basically, everything that we set there is already going to be in here. We can see our VPN settings, IP addresses that will be assigned, default group default group addresses, DNS, um, our private networks, that's gonna be um, allowed by our clients. They'll be given access to, so you can either skinny that down, you can make additional ones. Like I said, it's line by line there. So uh, with that all being done, now we'll wanna create a user. So we'll go to user management, user permissions, and we're gonna create a new user. This user, we're just going to call it user, user1. For the password, go ahead and create a password. And this stuff can obviously be changed depending on your reasoning or need be, but we're going to keep this all this, you know, set there. So I got user1 password, and we're going to go ahead and hit save. And then we're going to need to update the running server. So now that's been updated, and now we're going to go ahead and test this out. So basically what you'll want to do is we can open up another browser if we wanted to. So I'll just do it. Keep that up. We'll do. We we'll want to go to just directly to the IP address. No admin. As you're going to see the difference. This is called user login. We didn't give it any permissions. So you can see no admin permission here. We're going to go user1, and we're going to put in the password. Now it's going to ask you to download your client of choice. And obviously, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download this and set this up. Click more info if you're on Windows, and then run anyway. And it looks like I might already have this installed. So cancel or sure yes so I'm gonna open up the open VPN cl connect client and looks like I had a session from a previous lab so we're gonna go ahead and just change this actually we're gonna delete this profile create a new one so we're gonna put in the actual profile is just gonna be the IP address. So we're going to take that IP address, which I should already have copied. Yep. And then hit next. We're going to accept that certificate. Now, obviously, if you have a fully qualified domain certificate, you could put that in there to allow for VPN. Um, probably I could do I can do a tutorial on how to do that as well. So you hit accept. And then I'm just gonna, you know, do the do my put my profile in here. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna do it for demo purposes here. Import. Now if I turn this on, hit OK, and now we're connected. 
And if we go back to, I believe you can see these sessions. Um, let me double check. So, see, okay, so let's go to VPN settings. Thought I saw something, oh, under status maybe. So we got one active current user, so we can see who that user is, their VPN IP address. And now we should even be able to see maybe some networks, uh, network settings. So let me see. Yeah, statistics maybe. Yeah, so now, yeah, so I thought maybe you sometimes on some clients you can see the uh, allowed networks, things like that. So that's really it. Uh, you know, you can now, if you wanted to, you can essentially go back and create additional instances that you could be able to access directly from your PC. This probably actually even changed the, um, if I go into the networking settings under change adapter options, you might sometimes see, okay, so it doesn't do it. So Cisco does it. They create another adapter there that gets enabled. But yeah, no. So now, yeah, you're basically set up to connect to your cloud environment um, and utilize your OpenVPN server. So this is a way for you to be able, and then if you wanted to, you could also tunnel all your traffic back to um, AWS to be able to access the internet as well, if this was a VPN uh, setup that you wanted to do like that. So if you had, say, resources or users um, that's accessing your resources, but you also want to filter all their traffic, you could do that as well um, using OpenVPN. So again, you know, I hope that uh, helped with you being able to set this up. Again, you know, if you have any questions or any comments in regards to the video or anything that I might have missed, Again, reach out to me in the comments, and I'll be sure to reach, uh, you know, get back with you. Again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.